Hello, I'm Bishop Hansen, and I'd like to invite you to experience a better way of life. It's more within your reach than you may realize. Many people have given up on religion because they've tried churches that didn't really meet the needs in their life or because they tried being a Christian but didn't feel adequate. Still others have been disillusioned by people who call themselves Christians but don't act like it. I have to admit, I don't have much confidence in religion either. The secret to a better life is not a religion or a church, it's a personal relationship with God. This presentation is designed to help you strengthen or upgrade your relationship with Him. Rather than expounding to you a long theological lesson on salvation, I think it would be helpful if I could share a story of a typical person who finds new life by being born again the way the people in the Bible were born again. I'll call him Max. Max was born into a good family. They called themselves Christians. They attended church occasionally, sometimes even regularly. He sat in a large auditorium and listened to many things he didn't understand. He, he really didn't get into it because the music was so different and people were doing things that didn't really make sense to him. But he knew he was supposed to go to church and it was the right thing, the Christian thing to do. Well, as Max grew up and as he mingled with his friends, he found out that many of his friends didn't understand church or God either. It seemed like no one he knew had ever felt God or had any experience with Him. In fact, most of them dreaded attending the long, boring church services. So, before Max realized it, he was mixed up in more exciting things. Drugs, alcohol, and wild parties became his thing. Max moved on through his teenage years, took in a couple years of college, got married, had children, all the other things normal people are supposed to do. Unfortunately, life dealt a few hard blows. Marriage and child rearing weren't quite what he had expected. and He found himself depressed, angry, and confused. In spite of good intentions, his frustration led to heavy drinking, which led to many more problems. Finally, divorce separated him from the people he loved. It was then that Max began to ponder what life was really all about. It seemed to ring hollow. He began asking himself many questions like, Why am I here? Is there a God? Does He care about me? In fact, Max began to wonder if life was even worth living. So he embarked on a search for answers and for meaning in life. He tried diets, clubs, meditations, psychics, other promised cures. And then in desperation, he started going from church to church. There seemed to be so many beliefs and philosophies. Who was right? Was anybody right? Then one day, Max stumbled into a little church that was a bit different. The people there weren't just sitting quietly listening to a few polished people sing and talk about God. This church was full of ordinary people who seemed to be truly interacting with God. Now, granted, they were a little bit loud and excited, but it seemed like they were really connecting with God, like they understood the meaning of life. Soon he began to hear the testimonies about how God had changed their lives. Some people shared with him how God had put their marriages back together, healed their families. He heard others tell about how they had been healed and how God was still blessing their lives. For Max, it finally started to dawn on him that religion was not in books or church halls, but religion was in the heart. As he listened and learned of the plan of salvation, of how Christ came and died so that he could have abundant life, he began looking toward a new lifestyle. He repented of everything he'd ever done wrong, he went to an altar of prayer and honestly confessed to God that he was sorry and that he wanted to begin living life God's way, with God calling the shots. Mass experienced a great sense of relief at this point. In fact, the feeling was so great he even thought he'd experienced salvation in its fullness. Well, he had drawn closer to God, but lucky for Max, he didn't stop there. In the coming weeks, Max hungered for more of God. Someone shared a scripture with him that explained his need to be baptized. So, he was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was thrilled to know his heart had been washed clean. 
What a temptation it was to stop there. But Max discovered even more. He learned that Jesus wanted to come live in his heart and fill him with the Spirit. One night, at the close of a service, Max accepted the minister's invitation to walk to the front of the auditorium and pray. He raised his hands in an act of surrender and worship to God. He told God once again how much he wanted to serve him and how badly he needed his help. Then he began thanking God for the promise of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Suddenly he was overwhelmed by an awesome presence of God as God moved into Max's life. He was overwhelmed with a feeling of God's love and joy and began speaking in another language just like the people in the book of Acts did when they were saved. It was then that Max realized what it was to have a relationship with God. Now he could begin living life God's way with God's help. Max had been born again of the water and of the Spirit. The Bible tells us in Romans 3.23 that we all have sinned. We can't be good enough to earn heaven. We need a Savior. But in order to accept a Savior, we must admit that He's God and start treating Him like God. Only then can He give us the many blessings He's promised the believer. Jesus once told a man how someone might begin a new relationship with God. You can read the story in John chapter 3, where he told a, a Jewish leader that he must be born again of the water and of the Spirit in order to be saved. Unfortunately, there's much confusion today concerning the born-again experience. Much of the confusion is due to thousands of years worth of religion that's caused people to get different ideas about the new birth experience. I recommend that a sincere believer search the scriptures for the pattern of new birth rather than accepting the opinions of a church or denomination. There are four stories in the book of Acts that describe people being born again. These are recorded in Acts chapters 2, 8, 10, and 19. If you'll take time to read these chapters, you'll find that in every case, people who are being saved or born again experienced the following three things. First of all, they repented or asked forgiveness of sins and determined to live life God's way. Secondly, they were baptized in Jesus' name. This step of obedience allows God to wash our sins away. Thirdly, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. Others knew when this experience took place because they heard them speak in tongues. Jesus' own life was symbolic of this new birth process. He died, was buried, and rose again. The scriptures tell us that we die to our old life when we repent and ask God to forgive us of sin. Then we're buried with Christ by being baptized in His name. And when we've obeyed God and committed our lives to Him, He promises that we will rise to a new life. This happens when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is made evident when God causes us to speak in a language we didn't learn. According to Scripture, receiving the Holy Spirit is what gives a believer the strength and encouragement they need to live a good moral life. You'll also find this experience to be a great thrill and comfort. It will be a landmark in your life because it's the point at which Jesus comes into your heart. Peter stated the plan of salvation most concisely in Acts 2.38 when he said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you'd like to be born again, let us help you. We'd be glad to come to your home and give you a Bible study that helps you discover the plan of salvation for yourself. I'd also encourage you to attend Acts 2 Ministries whenever you can. We endeavor in our services to help people respond to God. There are people who will help pray with you until you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is coming soon. He wants you to have abundant life now and forever. But He's a gentleman. He'll not force His way into your life. The next move is yours. If you move His way, it'll be the best decision of your life. If you'd like someone to pray or counsel with you about being born again, please call us or visit us online. 
Thank you for listening and for sharing this resource with someone else. May God bless and keep you.